Alrighty folks, welcome to uh, another Friday Waffle, another quality Friday Waffle. Not the content, but look how crisp the picture is. Yeah, I mean, uh, I spent a lot of money on that camera. Um, and like a lot of technology that I buy, not even just technology, like a lot of stuff that I buy, I end up not using it, which is just stupid. Uh, hence the reason I'm selling lots of stuff. So anyway, how are you? Um, I hope you're all doing fine. Um, I'm recording this uh, last night, uh, Thursday. Um, yeah, I've uh, I've actually made a script. This is the first time in I don't know, blah, I reckon probably five six years we've actually written some stuff down to talk about. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's get this thing going. Um, what have I been up to this week or in the last seven days? Um, <clears throat> I didn't do a great deal uh, on Saturday last weekend. On Sunday, I went along to a, a retro gaming market. I hate that phrase, retro gaming. I really do despise it, but you know what? Everybody talks about it. Everybody refers to retro gaming. I was even watching a, a, a podcast with uh, Jason... Oh, Gadget Show Jason, can't even remember his bloody name, and Susie out the Gadget Show, and they were talking about retro gaming, you know, it's just, it's become this thing. But anyway, I was at this uh, marketplace uh, through in Glasgow, and uh, it was, it was, I think it was six pounds, was it six pounds per ticket? And I got in, and all it was, was people selling stuff. And I'm thinking, where is the justification for charging people to get in? There is none. I mean, you go to Comic-Cons or whatever it is, these big kind of gaming things, and yeah, 99% of it is just stalls. But you might have people, you know, signing autographs or whatever. You know, you might have famous people there. I mean, I totally get... At Comic Cons, there's going to be you know going to be people, celebrities, whatever. They're going to have to get some sort of fee, which you know needs to be generated uh, probably through uh, ticket sales. But something like a gaming market, where all it was was trestle tables with the usual suspects selling the same games, and virtually everyone was the same. You know, it was all. PlayStation upwards, there was very, very, very little 16-bit or, uh, well, to be fair, no, there was, there was a few stalls selling SNES games, Mega Drive games, but they were all the same, but my point is, why are they charging people? Where is the justification? You know, these people who are selling stuff, there's obviously going to be a rent that they've got to charge uh, for people to, to use this thing, the organisers. So, surely to God, the companies are actually selling the stuff should be getting charged at, not the punters. So it cost us, it cost us 12 quid, which isn't a lot of money, but we were there about, well, we're not even there an hour. You know, it's bullshit. What, where is the justification? If anybody can tell me where, how they can justify charging a punter to go in to buy stuff. That is it. There was nothing else. There was no talks. There was nothing. It was like, it's like, what's, what's next? Are they going to start charging people to go into the supermarket. You want to come into Asda, mate? Oh, hang on, it's five pounds to get in. Fuck off. Honestly, that really got my goat up. Um, did I buy anything? No. And that kind of leads on to... Uh, no, if I, no I'll, 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 I'll talk about that bit in a wee bit. Um, this week, I think I might have mentioned it in... Uh, I was talking to somebody about it, it might have been in my, my live stream that I did on, was it Sunday I think it was, possibly. I uh, I acquired, uh, I acquired a, a piece of software which is easily, uh, you can easily download it. And it's uh, it's called, uh, well it's CoinOps, I think this the one I've downloaded is called Arcade Gold, I think it's called. And uh, yeah, it's from, uh, it's a torrent file that you download, and this is, it's only about eight gig in size, which is absolutely nothing. 
And you know what? It is wonderful because it's it's all arcade games. I mean, you can download various other versions. Uh, you know, you've probably I've, I I downloaded a coin ops about four years ago. It was like two terabytes in size. And you could keep adding stuff on, so you had every single system going. But this one, Arcade Gold, is just coin ops, and more specifically, I think there's about a hundred games, hundred and fifty games, something like that. Maybe not even as much as that. But what really, really makes it fantastic is the front end of used. It's like you're, it's like you're in an arcade. You know, you've got the screen in front of you. They've got all the proper marquees. Uh, the banner is it the banner they call it the bit along the top. So if you're playing Pac-Man, you've got the Pac-Man banner. You've got the part one, all the sort of all the decal and all that kind of stuff, plus the controls. You can even like see the, the instructions on the kind of joystick, etc. But I guess it's what makes it wonderful is you're, when you're kind of looking at the different games, you can see Pac-Man, but to the left and right-hand side, you can also see other games that are getting played. So say like Pac-Man, Phoenix, uh, I don't know, name a game that begins with P, I don't know, can't remember. Um, but and what, what what's lovely? It's a it's a worky genius. You can hear the the sound of Pac Man, but you can also hear the sound of the the arcade machines next to it. So it's it's. I'm not going to say it's like being in an arcade because you're sitting at a computer, but it really recreates that cacophony of noise. Um, it's it's wonderful. It really just uh, it's a beautiful way to play games. And they're all set up, you know, you plug in a, 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 you know, an Xbox 360 controller and you're ready to go. Um, and what really adds to it as well, apart from the front end, because, uh, but yeah, apart from the front end, the actual games, they've set them up in such a way that when you play the game, it's on a kind of uh, a CRT screen. Um, you can see like the board around it. But they've, they've used like, various uh, filters like uh, sort of scan lines and there's also there's also an effect they use where it's like the actual covering of the the screen is scratched uh, and it's got kind of marks in it and you're probably thinking why the hell would that make it better trust me folks it, when you're when you're playing it you think that looks like an ancient coin op that you'd play in your local uh, taxi queue or chippy whatever it is or whatever you played your, your games back in the day. It's wonderful, it's so authentic. Um, it's such a nice front end. As I said, it's, it's less than, it's about eight and a half gig in size to download. It's everything's there. Um, it just works straight out of the box. And the great thing is, because there's only, I say, 150 games, the problem I find with these big, like, uh, Images that you get online where you can download like 70, 75,000 games, you know, every game for every system. You become completely overawed with the number of games and you end up playing nothing because you think, what can I play? You're going through all these games you've never heard of. This one takes the sort of classics. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's, there's, uh, there's quite a few games that uh, I think, oh, that's a shame. Like, for example, Outrun's not there. Um, quite why uh, I don't think there's any racing games no there is actually I'm sure Turbo Run's included um, but that's obviously been the, per the person that's put together it's their preference for what they've wanted to do but yeah it's called Arcade Gold and uh, it's a, a website called Arcade Punks um, easily to find just google it you'll find it um, like I said it's a, a, sh a really small download but it's a wonderful wonderful thing um, you know, if you wanted like the ultimate uh, sort of like front end for a meme card, whatever, then put it on it. But even playing it on a PC, it's just fantastic. So I've been playing a bit of that, and that's excellent. Arcade uh, Magic, I think it's called. Uh, I'm going to rant again. Fireworks, yep, we're now past the 5th of December, 5th of November even. Um, and like a lot of people, um, I get extremely pissed off with fireworks going off virtually from, I would say from the, the middle of September. In September, 
the fireworks start. You hear them going off and it goes on right through September, October and you obviously get to the 5th of November. I don't, I have to say this, I don't have a problem with fireworks per se. I've got nothing, I think it's great that they have, you know, uh, controlled firework displays because, you know, people can get to enjoy them. Where I get really pissed off is them going off all the time and I've got two dogs, uh, one of them is completely deaf. He used to be terrified of them but he's deaf so he doesn't hear them. The other one, he's absolutely petrified and last night, in fact probably, the, I've not taken him out for a walk for about three or four days but I took them out last night and within 30 seconds there was a bang and my dogs just wanted to pull me back home again so they were out for about, I don't know, two minutes. Same way tonight, I didn't actually hear any fireworks but I think my dog heard something and that was him, he was terrified, he wanted to go back, you know, I just, eh, apart from anything, in fact I was talking to my next door neighbour and uh, she's a nurse and she was telling me that there was, uh, through in Edinburgh, apparently there was a group of, uh, I'm going to say, well they're yobs, scum, we'll call them scum, they apparently set fire to a lot of uh, cars in a car car uh, showroom. Apparently one of the perpetrators lost, he almost lost his hand with a firework. Ha 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 ha, serves you bloody right, honestly. Um, that's the problem, I don't know why we sell fireworks. They're explosives, they're dangerous, why do we sell them to the public? Uh, absolute beggar's belief. I'm not one of these old fuddy duddies that uh, says, oh, ban fireworks. Yeah, ban them to the public for sale to the public. Organise, you know, a community bonfires, whatever it is. You know, there's nothing. I, I love fireworks. I'm not a particular big fan of the, the bangs, whatever. Um, even people bursting balloons. I get a bit, oh, get on edge. Um, you know, I appreciate a firework display like the next person. But uh, this, selling them to the public uh, and we've got to put up with the bangs for like two months, just beyond the joke, you know. Apart from animals being terrified, um, I've, I've heard that people who have been in the army, people who have served, served in the army, they may have PTSD, uh, post-traumatic stress syndrome, whatever it is. Uh, P, P, I can't even bloody remember the abbreviation. Anyway. Yeah, that's probably going to set them on edge as well, hearing explosions, whatever. And then apparently even like insects and birds are terrified as well. So I just think it's, people say, oh, it's tradition. Well, slavery was a tradition. Hanging people was a tradition. Burning witches was a tradition. It was, we did it. Does it make it right? Of course not. Let's get rid of fireworks and just keep them for the public. Anyway, enough of my rant, excuse me. Right, my, <clears throat> excuse me, my last uh, rant. Oh, and I've actually got two rants. Um, PC Woes, uh, yeah, I bought myself a, a really nice set of uh, wireless headphones uh, on the Amazon sale. Though I found out they're not actually, they were on the Amazon Lightning sale. And I thought, oh great, get a, a good pair, bought them. Uh, it turns out you can still buy them even now for the same price. But anyway, that's not the uh, the rant. That's for another day. They're excellent headphones um, and they're Bluetooth. And I've been using them on my PC, using them for listening to music, listening to videos, whatever, gaming sound. Um, but I noticed, uh, although I managed to do a live stream with them on a couple of, uh, last week, worked absolutely fine. I was trying to record some videos last night. Remember these things that I used to put out back in the back in the day? Uh, yeah, I was trying to record a number of videos and for whatever reason OBS, uh, which is the software I use for uh, for doing all my videos, it couldn't uh, it wasn't picking up the sound through my capture card. You know, I was using the mister and for whatever reason it wouldn't it wouldn't figure it out. Um Del Boy, I had the problem at the weekend, Del Boy told me what to do is uh, if you go into the, the settings you might find that it's muted itself and it had. So I kind of got it working but last night it just simply would not work and by sheer chance I figured out 
when I pulled out the, the power to the, the, the capture card and it's plugged it back in again, it started working again. So quite laterally, switching it on and off solved it. But then tonight, I was uh, trying to transfer some files onto a USB stick and I've got, uh, I've got an extension cable that runs from the back of my PC, it's a USB 3 and it runs, I've actually got it like taped to the top of my PC so it's nice and easy, I can just plug the thing in. For whatever reason, there are certain uh, USB sticks, when I plug it in, Windows makes the noise, the wee kind of clunky noise, like it's, it's detecting something, but for whatever reason it won't open up a folder. And then if I plug in a different USB port, it opens up fine. Why is that? What is it? Why Why does Windows forget where things are? Um, it's so bloody frustrating. I mean, it's been it's been a thing that's existed for a long time um, since Windows came along. But you thought by now they should have fixed these problems. If any of my technical friends can tell me why does Windows stop recognising certain devices when it's plugged into a certain USB port and the only way to do it is to plug it into another one until it forgets that one then you've got to move on to another one. Why is that? There's probably a reason for it um, but it's bloody frustrating. Right, my last rant and sorry it is all negative, negative, negative um, I've just called it here the overall state of the retro gaming scene. Overpriced, overcrowded, saturated. Yeah, when I was at that uh, said computer fair, the one I had to pay to get in, did I tell you about that? Um, all the games, every game that I saw, like for the SNES or the even the Xbox 360, PS3, Virtually every game was about 30 quid. You know, some of them were more. I mean, there was there was a couple of, there was a guy selling a game, I don't know what it was, was it Pokemon, something or another, and he was wanting 750 quid for it. And I was picking up, I mean I'm you know me, I don't collect I don't collect games for the sake of collecting them. I I like to have games to play. And through the wonders of technology SD cards, all that kind of bollocks. I don't really, I'm not interested in buying games because I can play them, I can download the ROMs and just play them. Um, but I was just having a wee look, just having a wee nosy to see uh, see what there was. And a couple of games that I did pick up, they were like, you know, 40 quid. And you're like, really? I mean, there was a guy, there was a guy, uh, there was a, a couple of retro, uh, that horrible phrase, retro gaming, uh, for sale sites and there's a guy selling Silent Hill for the PlayStation which I had and he's wanting 90 quid for it no 100 pounds for it then there was somebody else selling Resident Evil and he was wanting about 100 quid for it when did things when did games like that become so ridiculously pricey I'm just glad that I've had my time with games you know I, I bought my games I bought my systems when they were they were cheap, um, don't get me wrong. I have bought a few systems over the last couple of years that have been quite pricey, but you know things like Vectrexes and all that kind of stuff. I got them for a, a song, you know what I mean. Uh, now you pay daft money for them, but and apart from games being maybe maybe I'm being unkind. I'm saying games are overpriced. They're, when you think about it, a SNES game, a box SNES game, back in. 1992 would have cost you 40 quid. 40 quid in 1992 was, I don't know, probably about £100, something like that. So selling a game now for 40 quid, it's half price or 40% of the price. But that game, that SNES game that you can buy for 40 quid, 10 years ago or maybe more than that, 20 years ago, you would have got it for a fiver. Um, but retro gaming has just become so, 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 so cluttered and busy. Everybody's wanting to have their own YouTube channel. Um, I thought when I went along to this thing in the last last Sunday, I thought it was going to be... I don't know why, I kind of thought it was going to be quite quiet, you know. You could see it was mobbed, absolutely mobbed, to the point that you couldn't really get near 
any stall. If you really wanted to look at a stall, you had to you had to kind of push your way through or stand and wait for 10 minutes while the, kind of the crowd's cleared. Um, so that's probably why we left so early. But all the stalls that I saw, they were all selling the same stuff. They are all selling the same games. You know, if you want to... Here's a top tip, folks. If you want to buy... Uh, if you want... If you want a to buy an Xbox 360 or a PlayStation 3. These are good systems to own right now. And here's why, because you can pick up games from CEX or eBay for pennies. Honestly, you can pick up, you'll pick up games for a pound. Games are really, really, really good. And even if you don't, if you don't play them, I mean, I personally think the th Xbox 360 is probably, it's not my favorite console, but I think it's the best console. I think if I, if I was to only own one gaming system and all the games that you could get for it, it would be the Xbox 360. These games right now, they're as cheap as chips. They really, really are. Um, what you Do what I did. Um, one of my mates um, did a, a top 100. It was a guy called uh, Return to Gaming, uh, Dean. If you're watching this, Dean, I hope you're doing well, mate. Um, Dean did a the best 100 games on the, the 360 and what I did was I put it on my phone and then I went through, I was going into all these game stores, CEX, eBay and I bought up as many of the games I could, as I could get and I probably spent, I'm lucky if I probably spent about 100 quid, not 100 quid, no, yeah, I probably spent more than that, you know, but they're so, so cheap and even if you're not going to play them, buy them because there you go, SNES games, you couldn't give them away 30 years ago. Now they're going for stupid money, they really are. Um, like I says, there's the PlayStation Resident Evil, you know, 100 quid. Silence, eh, Silence of the Lambs, Silent Hill, 100 quid. Buy all these Xbox 360 games and PS3 games, stick them in a cupboard, dig them out in 10 years' time. That's your pension sorted, you know what I mean? Sell them for stupid money. But yeah, it's just it's just me having a, a general kind of moan. I'm glad that I'm no longer uh, looking to expand my collection. I'm the opposite. I'm now looking to kind of reduce my collection, get rid of games, get rid of hardware, um, because it's so expensive now. And it's it's not even just the expense part. It's just the sheer greed that people are you know people are trying to charge for for things. You, like at one time you could go into Facebook Marketplace and you could pick up you could pick up bits of hardware for like pennies. Now you, you have people selling there's somebody trying to sell a PlayStation 2 with 10 games and he's what 200 quid for it. <laughs> you know, nobody's well, hopefully nobody's gonna give him or him or her, I don't know who it is, um, are gonna pay that kind of money. Um, but it's just it's mental and I said like I said, I'm just glad that uh, I'm out of out of the scene now um, from a, a buying point of view because everything's so expensive and I just kind of I roll my eyes and I kind of sigh when I see the price that people are wanting for things you know I remember being down at uh, Play Blackpool last no it wasn't Play Blackpool it was uh, Nerg and it wasn't this year it was last year and somebody was selling a Fort Apocalypse for the Commodore 64 I thought oh excellent on tape I'll buy that they were wanting 15 quid for it. It's like, fuck off. Honestly. Anyway, I'm going to have one more drink of my tea. Right, that is my moans. You'll be glad to know. Uh, yep, yep, yep. Talked about that, talked about that. Right. A couple of questions. Del Boy, what is the worst keyboard controls of any game on any computer between 1977 and 1984? It doesn't have to be a complex one like Gunship and Elite, but must be a non-redefined layout. Now, as people probably know, I was a C64 guy back in the day, um, and 99% of the games on that were joystick. So when I got pals with my mate Grant, who had a Spectrum, and he used to use the keys, I simply couldn't use keys, and I'm still like that. You know, when I see people playing games, um, playing Spectrum games with keys, I'm like, how can you do that? I just don't understand. It's, I've not got the dexterity. I've never had the practice to kind of do it. Um, but there were a couple of games, and I can't actually, I couldn't actually tell you what they were. There's been a few games that I've played 
in the past on the spectrum and instead of using like I don't know Q and W is that up down down up whatever and I don't know you know two keys up down you'd put the, the up key would be above the down key obviously the right key would be to the right of the left key obviously that's what you would normally do but there's been a few games that I've played where they've actually used the uh, the the numeric numbers along the top of the spectrum which is fine for left and right I get that but up and down so the key on the left is down the key to the right of that is up it's completely it's 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 false it's not natural <laughs> and it's it's unplayable you know I don't know why they've got a full keyboard full keyboard to use and for some bizarre reason they've decided to use keys that are up and down let's use them two side by side instead of one at the top and one at the bottom um, sorry Dale I can't tell you what the name of the game was there's been a few games like that in the past and it just it's like what the fuck why would you do that why the hell would you have a game and pick that you've got another I don't know 40 keys something like that to pick from Secondly, what is the best keyboard in your opinion between 1977 and 1984? This has been a contentious issue over the years. Um, I did do a video with my mate uh, Neil um, oh, a couple of years ago where we discussed what had the best keyboard. Now, the keyboards of note that I've used, the Atari 800, excuse me, I'm going to get a hanky, uh, yep, the can't believe I've not got my Atari 800 anymore. I'm not regretting selling it, don't get me wrong, I'm not regretting selling it. Um, but yeah, it had a nice keyboard. The BBC obviously had, has a good keyboard. The Neil was the only person in existence that owned a, a Lynx machine, not the Atari Lynx, the Lynx by computers, not computers, Cam computers. Um, this was back in the early 80s when there was about 50 different computers. So when your mum said she was going to buy one for Christmas, you had to decide what one we what you want. Um, and nobody wanted the links. But uh, anyway, Neil's got one. But he he says that that has got one of the finest keyboards uh, out there. Another machine, I think a lot of the MSX uh, keyboards were really 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 good um, stuff like the Commodore 64 the, the C64 whilst it was infinitely better than the Spectrum the C64 keyboard I thought was a bit crap um, like I said compared to the Spectrum it was good even the like the Atari 800 XL it had quite a decent uh, keyboard obviously the worst keyboard would probably be I think the Mattel Aquarius had one of the most horrendous uh, it had little rubber keys but it was horrible you had the ZX81 obviously um, and Atari 400 with a horrible membrane thing the Spectrum as well some people say they like the Spectrum keyboard it's probably down to a nostalgia thing rather than it uh, being good <laughs> in any shape or form but yeah I think out the keyboards that I've used hardware wise I think I would go for the Atari 800. Uh, it was solid, it was clicky, it was real, it was quality, pure quality, as we like to say in Scotland. So thank you very much, uh, Dale. Very kind of you. Steve's Gaming. I love your nice and nasty series, but what are your three games you would take and three that shouldn't exist? I'm not going to answer that, Steve, because, well, you'll find out in a later video um, and lastly Colin Jones what is the fastest vehicle you've ever controlled mine was a PA28 Cherokee at about 140 miles an hour under instruction um, I'm, I'm a bit of an old fart um, I don't drive fast I do have a company car which is a BMW and it's like shut off a shovel um, which is really nice and I probably do drive faster now because I've got that but it's only to like overtake whatever I don't really drive fast 
I'm really, really dull. Um, I think the fastest I have done would be in my previous car. I was coming back on the motorway from Falkirk and it was about, I don't know, it was, it was dark. There was no cars on the road and I had just got this new car and I thought, I'm just going to see how fast it can go. And I think I got it up to about 109 miles an hour. And I, I just, I shat myself. I'm like, oh, I was too scared. I just, I've got images of like, you know, the uh, tires bursting and what have you. So yeah, probably about 109 miles an hour. And that was for like about five seconds. Uh, pretty boring calling. Um, right, listen, just talking about cars there, actually. I just want to, to touch on something. Um, I don't know if you're aware, well, Bad news, obviously, Donald Trump, but I'm not a political channel, I'm not even going to talk about that. I've got my own feelings about Trump, but uh, and now's not the time to talk about it. There was a, a report um, last week of an accident that uh, took place in Edinburgh on uh, Saturday, last Saturday. There's, it's, it's called the Cowgate. It's, it's like the old part of Edinburgh. There's a street... And uh, there's pubs, there's clubs. Um, it's a real hive of activity at night time. And uh, there's, you know, there's cars go up and down. Now, apparently this road was actually assessed um, a few years ago by an organisation because they, they deemed it to be a very unsafe uh, road because of the cars. Apparently the pavements weren't really suitable pavements are too narrow so people that are maybe in a wheelchair would have to kind of go in the, the, the path. Anyway, Saturday night, half past seven, a, 70, a 74 year old man had just been in to get some messages shopping, that's what we call it in Scotland, uh, and he got struck by a, a bus and decapitated. Yeah, he actually got, his head came right off and uh, one of my a guy that I know, <coughs> excuse me, there was, the police were uh, put out an appeal for people to, apparently like like the, 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 the society we live in now, people film everything. You could see somebody dying and there's going to be somebody who's going to film it. Well, people, I don't think there's any footage that I'm aware of of the actual accident taking place. But people were videoing the dead body. There was even people taking photographs of the man's severed head. Um, there was a video that one of my friends got a hold of and I, I looked at it and I wish I hadn't. I mean, it was quite blurry. But because of the date, I think it was like Halloween night, there was people coming through, walking along the street and a guy picked up the head thinking that it was a Halloween prop and then he dropped it and then somebody else was like, I don't know, pretending to do a piss or something on it. Um, but it just, it just, it turned my stomach, apart from being an absolute tragic accident, awful, you know, my heart just goes out to, to oh, the man himself. The only blessing would be the man would have, they, they said that, that he died instantly. He'd have been killed right away. But can you imagine that man is somebody's father probably, he's probably somebody's husband, granddad. Can you imagine seeing a video of your granddad's severed head on, on social media? Just horrific. Apparently um, it, doesn't, it doesn't contravene the rules of certain social media groups, which is beyond me. Um, but just awful. I'm not, I'm not blaming people, but it's just like we now live in this society, like I says, where uh, you could be having a heart attack and somebody will film you because they can share it on social media. Oh my God, I've got this video of a guy having a heart attack and he dies, look. But yeah, just awful, absolutely awful. And if if something, hearing about something like that isn't enough to make people realise we've only got one shot at life, we only get one crack at this before it's our time, um, make the most of it. 
honestly, you've got to make the most of it because you never know. That poor guy went out for his messages. He never ever thought for one second that he would never return. So like I said, I just my heart goes out to the family. It's awful, truly awful. Um, just, yeah, one last thing. Um, my daughter is actually going to Japan um, in a couple of weeks' time. She's going with her mum on holiday for two weeks and she was asking me, is there anything that I want? Um, there's one thing I've asked her for which I'm not going to I'm not going to mention because if I do get it, I'll probably do a video about it. I was just wondering, is there anything that anybody that's watching this can say, oh bloody hell, you need to get one of these, you know, pr preferably kind of gadget, not gadget related, well gadget related, but gaming gadget related, like a handheld or something, is there something that you can only get in Japan? I mean, I'm, I'm right in thinking that she'll be able to buy it uh, a lot cheaper than it would cost us. Obviously you can get things from like AliExpress and that kind of stuff, but you've got customs and you know, import duty and you know, delivery and all that kind of stuff. So if anybody can think of anything that you know I would like that you can only get in Japan, uh, be reasonable, <laughs> then let me know. It's going to have to be something that my daughter can put into her, uh, her suitcase. Let me know. So listen, before I end this, um, my mate uh, Del Boy has been through uh, a second operation. I'm not going to go into details about it because he'll expand on it in his blog. Um, he was in hospital on Tuesday, I think it was. He's been home for a couple of days. Just want to say a big uh, get well soon, buddy. Good to have you back. Um, you know, hope you have a swift recovery, uh, and I look forward to seeing you back on uh, YouTube before long. So listen, folks, I'm going to go and get this thing edited. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. It's good to be back doing the, these things. Please keep the questions coming. Like I said, it does make it more interesting um, because if I don't, then I've got nothing to talk about and it could be another two or three weeks before I do one of these. So keep the questions coming. I may or may not be along on Sunday for a live stream. Um, I have taken a bit of a kind of hiatus from them and I've enjoyed my time off, but I enjoyed the one last week. So you never know if I'm going to appear I will put a wee post on the usual places. So till next time, folks, I hope you all have a wonderful Friday and weekend. Till next time, as always, thank you very, very much for watching.